Hey everybody, Caffeine Man here, and today we're going to be going over a drink for the gamers. That's right, we're going to be going over Game Fuel by Mountain Dew and Amp. But not only that, I feel like my timestamps are going to be highly used in this video. Because I'm also going to be giving you guys a history lesson. Do gamers like history? I don't know, but I'm about to find out. Coming right up. Hello again everyone, thanks for joining me today. Today, we're going over one for the gamers, and that's going to be Game Fuel. It's been a very popular request on my channel, not to be confused with G Fuel, which I probably won't be reviewing, but I'll probably review it in July when G Fuel comes out with the cans, because I prefer the cans as opposed to powdered drinks. So today, it's going to be Game Fuel, as well as a history lesson. Well, if you gamers want to skip ahead, that's perfectly fine, but if you want to learn something, I got the info for you. So what's this history lesson going to be on? I'm glad you asked. I'm going to start off talking about Mountain Dew. That's right. The one, the only, the original, the first highly energized soft drink. From there, I'm going to talk about its progression throughout the years, leading up to the time that they came up with AMP. I'll talk a little bit about the history of AMP as well, and tell you how they dealt with Kickstart, also made by Mountain Dew, and how they decided they were going to handle the competition. And that'll bring me up to the modern times, when we can talk about the newest energy drink that they came up with, Game Fuel by Mountain Dew AMP. I'm going to go over the Cherry Burst, the Berry Blast, the Tropical Strike, and the Original Dew. Timestamps listed below. If you want to stay informed on all things caffeine related, feel free to hit that subscribe button. I post new videos every Tuesday night and I want you guys to be there. Also, feel free to follow me on all social media. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, all at CaffeineMan1. Game Fuel is targeting gamers everywhere just by simply putting the word game in their beverage. But let's face it, the original Game Fuel was a drink called Mountain Dew. Loved by teens everywhere, hated by parents everywhere. Teenagers drank the stuff during any game that they played. Whether it was their favorite board game or even just a video game, they had to have the do. Now back in the day, gaming wasn't anything like it is now. Games just sort of kind of continued on and on. You know, you jump over a pit, then you jump over an alligator, then you jump over a pit, then you swing over an alligator, then you jump over a pit, and you get the idea. There wasn't a lot of playtime involved. But as video games progressed, you got lots of hours of playtime. I mean, some people take hundreds of hours to play a game. But way back in the day, Mountain Dew was played for a lot of other games that took a long time. I mean, some of these games people would play for hours and hours. And did I mention they played them for hours? I mean, some of these games could even be played for more than hours. They could be played for days and they could be played for weeks, depending on who was running the game. Um, can I get back in the shot, please? Thank you. So once video games started expanding out into longer playtimes, hardcore gamers also expanded from Mountain Dew to other energy drinks such as Amp or any other energy drink for that matter. Now, as you all should know, Mountain Dew is a Pepsi product. What you may not have known is that it was originally created to be a mixer for moonshine and whiskey. That's right, it was created by two bottlers in Tennessee, Barney and Allie Hartman, in the early 1940s. Mountain Dew was actually the slang name by the Scottish and the Irish to describe moonshine, and the Hartman brothers decided to use that as its trademark in 1948. In 1960, the Hartman brothers teamed up with a company called the Tip Corporation. In 1961, the Tip Company bought the rights to Mountain Dew, and Bill Bridgeforth, a manager at the plant at the time, decided to start putting his own Tri-City Lemonade into the Mountain Dew. And that caused sales to take off. I mean, they skyrocketed for the company. In going with the citrus lemonade idea, Mountain Dew decided that more citrus was the way to go. On the back of the bottle or the can, you'll find that concentrated orange juice, high fructose corn syrup, and citric acid are three of the key ingredients. In 1964, PepsiCo purchased the Tip Corporation and thus acquired the rights to Mountain Dew, and the rest is pretty much history. Since its inception, Mountain Dew has come up with over 40 different flavors over the years. Some are still with us, many have gone away. Has that affected the sales? Some theorize that it has. The reason being that sometimes people actually love certain flavors, but if they don't perform that well, or as well as the company wanted them to, they'll pull them off the market. And if you do that enough times, you're going to have enough people that liked lots of different beverages that you made, and then you just took them away from them. And those people are going to be more skeptical to try out a new drink when it comes out, only to have it potentially taken away. So as much as it's always good to try and come up with new ideas, they came up with a lot of new ideas, but pulled a lot of them back from people, which potentially hurt them in the future. A 16 ounce bottle of Mountain Dew has 61 grams of sugar and 72 milligrams of caffeine, which comes out to four and a half milligrams of caffeine per ounce. And then there was AMP. AMP Energy Drink was created under the Mountain Dew brand. In 2001, AMP was released onto the market. The original formula of AMP Energy Drink was marketed as a flavor extension of the Mountain Dew brand. And the label read, AMP Energy Drink for Mountain Dew. 
Now, when I first tried AMP, I thought that it was just concentrated Mountain Dew. And when they did reviews on it, they just said that it was a glorified Mountain Dew. But to a certain extent, that's kind of what Mountain Dew was going for. They wanted Mountain Dew as an energy drink. But I know that I did not like it because it was sweet. In 2006, only five years after its creation, they decided to change their packaging to make it more amped up. See what I did there? Then in 2007 and 2008, they began releasing new flavors. Some of the flavors released were Traction, Elevate, and Relaunch. And each year after that, they tried to come out with additional flavors, including a few tea flavors as well. In 2009, for the original flavor, Amp Energy, they decided to take off the Mountain Dew logo for another redesigned can. And at that point, in 2009, they began selling Amp under its own name. In 2012, again, Amp tried to make a difference in the market by releasing yet another series. This time it was their active, boost, and focus line. It basically was trying to market it based on those buzzwords. In 2017, Amp Energy Drink announced its plans to release Amp Organic Energy. With more natural energy drinks hitting the market, Amp decided that this was going to be their perfect opportunity to get customers what they demanded. It only has a few ingredients in it, and those ingredients are carbonated water, organic cane sugar, citric acid, natural flavors, and organic caffeine from natural green coffee beans. Sounds pretty healthy, huh? Well, maybe not. All that being said, the 12 ounce can that they came up with still had 44 grams of sugar in it. Granted, it was pure cane sugar, the healthier of the sugars, but still 44 grams in a 12 ounce can is a lot of sugar. But then again, that's what Mountain Dew is known for. As for caffeine, the Organic Energy Drink series was a 12 ounce can and it had 120 milligrams of caffeine in it, putting it at 10 milligrams per ounce, just like the standard amount of the most common energy drinks on the market. As for regular amp, it's a little bit weird. The 16 ounce can only has 142 milligrams of caffeine in it, so it's actually less than 10 milligrams per ounce. Also, it only has about 20% of your daily value of all the B vitamins. But most importantly, it's got 58 grams of sugar in it. Whew. That makes it one of the highest sugar content in energy drinks on the market. And it's just beating out Venom and Monster by a little bit. And the only ones that are higher than it are ones like Rip It, a handful of the Rockstar flavors, No Fear, and a few other smaller independent companies. But then again, Mountain Dew's always been known for the highest amount of sugar in their drinks. So why not energy drinks too? With all this talk of Mountain Dew and Amp, what about Kickstart? Doesn't Mountain Dew also make Kickstart? Isn't that like a conflict of interest? Well, with AMP finally taking Mountain Dew off the logo in 2009, AMP has slowly been pushing itself away from its association with Mountain Dew, even though we all know it was still owned by Pepsi and Mountain Dew. I mean, they must have hoped that other people forgot as well, because in February of 2013, Mountain Dew announced its new energy drink called Kickstart. Now, they didn't actually want to compete with AMP since they were the same company but they still wanted to tap into the energy drink world a little more. When it was released, Pepsi actually stated that Kickstart wasn't an energy drink, but an enhanced soft drink. They believed that Mountain Dew lovers would turn to this beverage as a healthier breakfast option instead of regular Mountain Dew because people drink Mountain Dew for breakfast. An energy drink breakfast beverage? That's what you're going with Kickstart? I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't know anyone who drinks an energy drink for breakfast. Besides, well, me. But when I do have an energy drink in the morning, it's not for breakfast, usually. Okay, sometimes it is. Anyway, it sounded ridiculous to most people, I'm sure. I mean, don't you agree? Comment down below if you guys drink energy drinks for breakfast and then that's it. I'd love to know that I'm not the only one. I know some of you probably do it in the morning for a pre-workout and that could be your breakfast as well. All that being said, depending on which Kickstart you picked up, regular Kickstart has 5% fruit juice in it and Hydrating Boost has 10% fruit juice in it. Ooh. Mountain Dew Kickstart also has some vitamin B and some vitamin C in it as well. How about caffeine? Their 16 ounce can of this energy drink has only 92 milligrams of caffeine in it. 92 for a 16 ounce energy drink. That puts it at just under six milligrams per ounce. As for sugar, it only actually has 20 grams of sugar. So maybe they're learning, maybe not. As I said, Mountain Dew actually came out with over 40 different flavors in their time. As for AMP, they keep trying to recreate themselves every couple of years by rebranding themselves and coming out with new logos and new cans and, ooh, look, we're new, and then slightly changing up their flavors. And even though they constantly try and reinvent themselves, they haven't been doing a bad job overall. Between the years of 2009 and 2013, AMP was holding strong as being the fourth or fifth ranking energy drink on the market. Now I say that's pretty good. I know all companies strive to be the best, but there's no way that Mountain Dew or AMP is actually gonna be able to compete with your big names like Red Bull and Monster, and even the up and rising Bang right now. But they can keep trying if they want. 
Now what they really need to do is get rid of all those other companies, all those other brands, and all those other flavors, and focus on just one drink. If they can focus on one drink, maybe they'd have some success. And limit the amount of flavors too, because you got way too many flavors. Focus on just a few drinks, and you could be successful. Is Game Fuel gonna be that drink? It might be. Mountain Dew didn't mind having its name on AMP to help them out. They eventually pulled away and decided to let AMP stand on its own two feet. Then Mountain Dew experimented with Kickstart. They did all right. Well now, Game Fuel's got three logos on it. It's got Mountain Dew, it's got AMP, and it's got Game Fuel. Mountain Dew, AMP, Game Fuel. Going back to their beginnings with as many logos as they can to sell the brand. So enough with the history lesson, let's get back to modern times and take an in-depth look at Game Fuel. First off, this 16 ounce can has 90 milligrams of caffeine. Boom! Strike one game fuel. 90? 90 in a 16 ounce can. That's like five and a half milligrams per ounce. I mean, coffee is stronger than that. I mean, come on, a 16 ounce can of Mountain Dew, a soda has 72 milligrams of caffeine in it. Do you really think you're gonna be that competitive in the energy drink market when you can't even come in at the standard 10 milligrams per ounce? Jeez, come on. Let's take a look at the can. Total sugar, 23 grams. Not bad for a Mountain Dew product. Added sugar, 20 grams. Eh, a bit high, 40% of your daily value. Carbs are at 24, which is 9% of your daily value. It's got 20% of your vitamin A, 40% of your daily value of niacin, 40% of your daily value for B6, and 40% for panthenic acid, which is your B5. Not too bad, but still kind of low for the amount of vitamins in most energy drinks. For sweeteners, it uses high fructose corn syrup, sucralose, and a sulfame potassium. As for the ingredients, well, there's a bunch in there. But some of the noteworthy ones are L-theanine, which I'm a huge fan of, Panax ginseng root extract, which I'm also a fan of, yerba mate extract, which I'm also a fan of. And the Cherry Burst uses Red 40. Why do I care about Red 40? Well, research studies have actually shown and proven that it can cause hyperactivity in children. Maybe that's why they put it in there. Lots of other testing has been done on Red 40, but nothing bad has been conclusive for humans, just a few negative side effects in rats. All right, guys, let's try these out, see how Game Fuel does. Excited. Let's start off with the original Dew. My best guess is that it's gonna be similar to Mountain Dew, probably similar to Amp with its own game fuel kick to it. And as a side note, these got some really cool tops to them. It's meant to be opened and then slid back, but then it can also be slid forward so that it's resealable. So actually, when you saw the nutrition facts on the can, they give you the one serving size, and then they give you the nutrition facts for the whole can. Unlike some of the other energy drink companies like Monster, who just give you the numbers for one serving, but it's two servings per can. This actually gives you both options, and because it's resealable, you can actually drink half the can if you want, close it up and save it for later. I like it. Let's see how easy it is to open though. It actually has instructions on the top and on the side of the can too. How helpful. Pull here. Ooh, that's got a pop to it. Then slide back. Nice. Whoa, look at that color. Woo! Look at that. That is fluorescent right there. Let's try it out. Wow, yeah. I mean, that tastes like a strong Mountain Dew. I mean, I'm actually right now considering trying the Amp and Mountain Dew just to compare it. Do I have one around? I put one up there. You guys want me to try it out? I wasn't planning on doing this. That's why I'm unprepared. I'm actually going to do it. I'm going to put this one down here. I'll go grab that one. Yes, I know it is warm, but you know, in times of need. Let's compare the two. Oh man, I mean, they're almost so similar. I mean, I would relate them to Pantone colors, but you guys probably wouldn't know what I was talking about. Yeah, they're pretty similar. This definitely has a soda flavor to it because it's Mountain Dew soda. And this one has more of the energy drink flavor to it, but it's Mountain Dew energy drink. I mean, they call it the original Dew. Yeah, they weren't lying. If you like Mountain Dew and you want some more caffeine, not a lot more caffeine, but 20 something odd milligrams, 
and be all set. Let's move along. Next up, we'll try the Tropical Strike. Some of you may have noticed that they're actually all called Charged. So this is Charged Tropical Strike. The other one is Charged Cherry Burst. The other one is Charged Original Dew. And the last one is Charged Berry Blast. But I think that's stupid, so I'm not calling them that. Tropical Strike. <sniffs> these things really pop. Be careful when you open these. You get a little mist coming at you. I can smell the tropical though as I pour it. Oh my goodness. Look at that. These things are fluorescent all right. I hate to see my pee later. Did I talk about pee too much? I might. Wow, that is actually a really good tropical flavor. I get some pineapple in there. Pineapple is probably the strongest. I get some mango in there. Get a little bit of orange, a little bit of citrus going on in there as well. I really liking it. I mean, I should probably do a comparison video because I like the Red Bull Tropical. I've had some other energy drinks that are tropical as well that have been pretty good. And this is right up there with a good tropical flavor. If you guys like tropical, you like the pineapple, you like the orange, mango, all that tropical stuff, you're gonna like this. They are a little bit sweet, but they're not too sweet. I'm quite surprised by it because I always expect Mountain Dew to be extra sweet. And even though these are sweet, trust me, they're not not sweet, but they're not bang and rain sweet. They're just right under that. Um, and maybe like under Venom as well, because that was really sweet. But with only 23 grams of sugar, they must use a decent amount of sucralose as well, as well as that asimum something potassium. I didn't look up what that stuff was because I'm lazy. I mean, I had to look up all the stuff for a whole entire history lesson. I did the history of Mountain Dew, I did the history of AMP, I did the history of Kickstart, I did Kickstart versus AMP. And I still had to fit time in for an energy drink review. I gotta drink all these things super quick. Hopefully get this video down under who knows how many minutes. How many minutes is this? This video is gonna be a long video, especially if I keep talking like this. I shouldn't drink the energy drink before I start the video. I usually drink the energy drink before I start the video to get me up a little bit, to keep me going. But then I drink four or five energy drinks during the energy drink. Now I'm just babbling. Okay, I'm moving on to the next one. Tropical, very good. If you like tropical, I highly suggest you try this out. It's good. Moving on. Next up, we got the Cherry Burst. I'm bursting with cherry goodness. At least I hope so. Now be careful now, this thing's gonna spray all over me. Make sure you hold that part away from your face so it goes that way, because if you open it this way, well, you'd have to open it with your thumb to open it this way, but yeah, open it this way. Woo! That's kind of fun. Don't let me down with those bold colors, my goodness. That's some bold red there. Some cherry red. We're going three for three. It's a little bit sweet, but it's not a bad sweet because I'm a sucker for sweet stuff. Got a good cherry flavor. I mean, I mean, I'm talking from all the cherry drinks that I've had. This one's got a strong, solid cherry flavor to it. It really got some pop to it. But I am tasting a little aftertaste of something now. Still got the cherry flavor, but I'm gonna have to sip again. I didn't even take a second sip of the other ones, did I? I don't remember. Hmm. Yeah, there's something a little bit weird about it. I can't put my finger on it. I think it might actually be the sucralose flavor. So it is a bit sweet, probably a little bit sweeter than the other two. I think they might have added just a little bit too much sucralose in it because I'm getting some of that sucralose flavor. Not to say the sucralose flavor is bad, but you get this nice solid cherry flavor and then you get this aftertaste of sucralose. Some people don't mind the sucralose, but anytime an energy drink has an aftertaste and it's not the aftertaste of something good, it's a little off-putting. So this one's gonna be the bottom of my list so far for the game fuels. It's got a good cherry flavor, but that aftertaste is gonna hit me. If you don't mind aftertaste, you might like it. As always, I always say, try it out for yourself. If you don't like it, don't drink it again. Don't blame me if you didn't like it, because I warned you. Moving on to the blue. Last but certainly not least, the Berry Blast. I am a sucker for a good berry, and I'm hoping for the best, because the first two were good, the third one not so good, and berry's always my favorite, so let's get right to it. Watch out for opening it, because it explodes. I can only imagine if you shook these like a little bit. <laughs> when do you guys do it? I, I, I want to know how it goes. I want you to shake it up just a little bit or a lot and see how much it explodes because these things explode just by holding them. Watch this. I'm actually going to open this one closer to the camera. Did you see that? Did you see that? Nuts. Ooh, cool blue baby out of you. I'm not singing a song. No copyright infringement, please. I am not copyright infringement. I don't even know what the song is. That wasn't a song. I was just talking about cool blue flavor. <clears throat> hmm. 
Oh yeah, didn't let me down. That's a nice good blueberry. It's got a little bit of raspberry to it. It's not too sweet, but it's up there. And I'm waiting for that little sucralose flavor to see if I'm getting that aftertaste. And no, I'm not really getting the sucralose aftertaste as much as the cherry. I might be tasting it a little bit. But yeah, it's actually pretty good. It's a good blueberry, good raspberry mix. Might have a hint of some other berry in there, but overall it's blue, meaning that it's blueberry with a little bit of raspberry. It's a berry blast. It doesn't lie. And I gotta say, they're very straightforward with their colors and their flavors, and they're dead on. They started off with four flavors, and they nailed each one of those flavors. And the cherry has a little sucralose, but. And actually, believe it or not, out of the four of them, I probably like the tropical the best. Even though this berry is pretty good, that tropical got all my taste buds going between the pineapple, the orange, the mango, all the flavors that were in there. Out of the four of them, I'd be picking that one up again. Maybe this one too. Now earlier, I did poke fun at the fact that these only have 90 milligrams of caffeine in them, but honestly, if they're actually marketing these to gamers, and gamers primarily are teenagers, and don't get mad in the comments down below, I know there are plenty of adults that play games as well, but they're marketing it to gamers and they're marketing it to teenagers because it's Mountain Dew. A lot of people don't know this, but the average amount of caffeine that a child is supposed to take in, and that's anywhere between 12 and 18 years old, is between 100 and 150 milligrams. The 100 at the lower age, closer to 150 as you get closer to that 18 limit. Once you turn 18, you can magically go to 400 safely a day. But until then, you're supposed to stay under 150. These energy drinks with only 90 are gonna keep the gamers under that amount, which is quite genius on their part, I must say. At only 90 milligrams, they'll be able to drink this safely, play their game for as long as they want, get the caffeine they need, get some B vitamins and C vitamins, be all set to go. Add that to the flavors being really good, it's gonna make it appealing for a lot of Mountain Dew people that wanna step it up from Mountain Dew and get away from AMP. I think Game Fuel's got a hit on their hands right here. Not just this one, all four of them. I mean, man, fifth in the market? They're not gonna catch up to Red Bull or Monster, but I'm predicting in 2020, Mountain Dew AMP Game Fuel could hit that number three spot. I have to see how Bang does. Bang doesn't have the distribution out there yet. Mountain Dew Game Fuel, Pepsi, second best distributor in the world. Not gonna mention the other one. I think they can do it. All right, so that's all I got for you guys today. I'm gonna go run some laps right now. Maybe even clean the house, who knows? I should probably just go to the gym, but I don't have a gym membership. Don't plan on it. So until next Tuesday, you guys have yourselves a great day or night.